Hi, this is Nicholas from ST Microelectronics. In this video, I will teach you how to use the STM32 timers to trigger ADC conversions periodically. The objective of this exercise is to use a STM32 timer to trigger ADC conversions at a configurable sampling frequency. We will toggle a GPIO for every conversions to show that the ADC is sampling at the expected frequency. For this exercise, we will use the following equipment. A Nucleo H745, as shown here, a micro USB cable to power and program the board, and an oscilloscope to verify the results. In the description of this video, I have added a link to download a zip file that contains all the materials needed to perform the hands-on. So please go to the description of this video and download the zip file and extract it somewhere on your disk. We will use the content of this file during the exercise. The software we'll be using is the STM32 Cube ID. So this is a ST tool which integrates STM32 Cube MX and is also a full ID. Let's get started. So we're going to open STM32 Cube ID. So double click on the icon on your desktop or from the start menu. Now select a directory as workspace. In my case, I'm selecting a temp directory and then press launch. We are going to create a STM32 project for this. Either click here or you can click also file, new, STM32 project. To select our target, we will go to the board selector and click or type Nucleo H745 and select the H745ZIQ. Okay, and now click it here, select it here and press next. Now give a name to your project. In my case, I'm going to call it STM42 using timers to trigger ADC. And then press finish. We want to start from the default settings or default modes of the peripherals, so we will press yes. In order to configure our project, we need to switch to our device configuration tool. So press yes here to change perspective. First, we will configure the IO or the GPIO that we will toggle after each conversion. So to do this, go to system core, select GPIO, expand a little bit. So the IO we will be using is the one connected to LD1, which is the green LED on your nuclear board. What we want to do is that we will change, you know, the context assignment to Cortex M7. So ARM Cortex M7. So there is two uh, core in uh, this micro and we'll be using only the Cortex M7 for this exercise. So please select ARM Cortex M7. Let's configure the ADC now. So in analog, select ADC1. So that's the ADC that we'll be using and enable, so first, okay, the runtime, same thing. So we'll select the Cortex M7 and enable one of the channel. For this exercise, we'll use input two. So a single ended channel. Now go to the parameter settings, expand a little bit. So we're not going to change the command settings. So we'll keep it by default. We are not going to change the ADC settings. We'll keep it by default. The only thing we're going to change here is the conversion mode. So remember, our objective is to trigger the ADC conversion with a timer. So we're going to change the trigger mode here, the external trigger conversion. And we're going to select the timer one. So select timer one, trigger out event. So we use timer one to trigger the conversions. You can select the rising edge or falling edge. We will keep the default setting, which is the rising edge. So we want to toggle an IO after each ADC conversion. So for doing this, the best way is to enable the ADC interrupt, the global interrupt. And basically, we will do the toggling of the IO in the callback function of the ADC ISR, so interrupt service routine. For the clock configuration, go to the clock configuration tab on top here. So as you can see, there is an issue. So to resolve the issue, press yes. So that we will set, you know, the clock configuration uh, as we want. So basically we should have 480 megahertz. So that's the maximum 
a frequency for the Cortex uh, L7 and 240 for the Cortex M4. We see that our APB1 timer clock is set to 240 MHz. So this is very important because we will use that as an input clock for the timer and then set the timer accordingly. It's time now to configure the timer. So go to the pinout and configuration tab. We can close this, close this, open the timer, and we'll select the timer one to trigger, because you know that's the one we selected for the ADC. So we need to configure the timer one now. We will select a PWM generation with no output because the timer is triggering the ADC internally. Enable the runtime context for Cortex M7 and then select the channel one with PWM, but PWM generation, no output needed. We can set up the auto reload register ARR also known as counter period. We will set it to 24,000, which is equivalent to 10 kilohertz sampling frequency. Remember that the input clock of the timer one was set to 240 megahertz. The sampling frequency is the timer clock frequency divided by the auto reload register, ARR. So if you want 10 kilohertz, you will divide 240 megahertz by 24,000. Enter 24,000 for the auto reload register or also known as the counter period. So put 24,000. Secondly, change the trigger output, so TRGO parameters. We're going to change the trigger event selection, TRGO, and we'll select from reset to update event because in the ADC configuration, we have selected the update event of timer one to trigger the conversions. We finished the configuration of the project. We can now save it to generate the code. So press yes. Change the perspective to a C and C++ perspective in order to add some code. Now it's time to add some code to our project. To do this, we're going to use the zip file that you downloaded from the description of the video. So please unzip this file. In the zip file, you will find a text file with the code you know, to be added. So that's what we're going to use right after that. Uh, just to show you, we have another zip file, which is the project, the full project, so the finalized project of this exercise, and then all the steps to follow if you want to uh, do it again. So I added the PDF about you know, all the steps to follow. But right now, we're going to use you know, this file. So please open it. And this is what we're going to add to our generated project. First, we will be adding the declaration of a variable that will contain the conversion of the ADC from the channel two that we'll be doing. So we're going to add that in the main.c of the Cortex uh, CM7, so Cortex M7 project that was just generated in cube ID. So copy this variable right here and we'll be adding it to our cube ID project. Going back to our stm 2 cube ID project. So this is the generated project right there. Uh, let's have a look. So you have one project for the Cortex M4 and one project for the Cortex M7. We won't touch in you know, order CM4, so the Cortex M4, and we'll be adding our code to this project, the CM7. So let's expand it. Let's look for the main.c. So this is located right here, double click on it. And now we're going to add the variable, so the ADC uh, value variable in this section, the PV section. So let's scroll down a little bit, uh, right here. So copy and paste. Then add this user code right here. That will be adding into the user code to section. So this is where we're going to calibrate uh, the ADC. And we're going to start the ADC uh, conversions. And we also start the timer. Now we're going to add the rest of the code. So we said 
in the user code section two, which is right here. So right after the configuration of the ADC and the timers, we'll be adding this to calibrate, start uh, the ADC, and also start the timer. Last part of the code is a callback function from the ADC conversion. So every time there is an interrupt about the end of conversion, so it will generate uh, an interrupt that will call the interrupt service routine and the ISR is going to call this callback function. This is where we're going to save the converted value from the ADC and also toggle one IO, which is, remember, the LED, the green LED on your nuclear board. So copy and paste this old code that we will be adding to the user code for section right here. Save your project and build it like this. Okay, zero error, zero warnings. That's great. Now we're going to build the project for the CM4, the default one that we haven't touched. So build it also. The project is also built. Zero errors, zero warning. Great, wonderful. Now it's time to load this code into the board. Please connect your nuclear board to your host machine using the USB cable. Once connected, first, we're going to load the CM4 project. To do this, debug as an STM32 application. OK. So this will program the CM4 project. Switch to go to the debug interface. And we can terminate because we just want to program the code. Now we'll do the same thing for the CM7. So go here, debug as, and STM32 application project. Okay, same thing. Switch and terminate. We're done. So we program both the CM4 and the CM7 code. You can now reset your board. And if you probe PB0, so from your board on the connector on the side, so you can find the PB0. So PB0 is the IO that we toggle after every conversion of the ADC. And we should expect that it's toggling every 100 microseconds, which is 10 kilohertz. And this is the case. So this is what I'm uh, watching, what I'm seeing on my scope after probing PB0, so which is uh, the green LED. And as you can see, it's toggling at the 10 kilohertz frequency as expected. Here are some useful links. So first, an application note, so AN4013, which talks about the STM32 timers, so across all the series, so from the advanced timers to the most simple timers. Then I added also the STM32H745 reference manual and the specification of the 745. Thank you very much for watching.